Hello learners, uh, hope all is well. Uh, from my last presentation, there was area of concern was that it was too long. So what I'm going to do is everyone knows uh, me in terms of uh, the way I like to talk. Uh, and uh, I would definitely like to make my sessions a bit shorter so that it can be easier to download, etc. So I'll give it my best and I'm sure there'll be less mishaps on this one. Okay, so today what we're actually going to do is deal with average gradient. This is an area of concern that you have actually raised. Okay, so let's get going so that we can make the presentation as short as possible. Now, uh, let me minimize myself so that I'm not in the way. Okay, so first of all, we need to look at the formula itself. And the formula reads vertical interval over horizontal equivalent. And remember, formulas give us an idea of what we're looking at. Because if I look at this, it's easy for me to see that vertical talks about this vertical. So it's talking about height. And of course, horizontal talks about the distance between the two points for which you are measuring the gradient itself. So that will be the horizontal distance, okay? So that's how we remember it, in which order to put it. VI over HE is the more preferred method. And you find that if you look at past papers, you will find that the past papers give you that formula. Now, I want to look at calculating the gradient of Tig Beacon 29 from spot height 1, 2, 5, 6. So I'm looking at these two points here. Now, when I measure it's important to note that I measure from the apex of the trigonometrical station and I draw my line to the spot height. That's something very, very important that you must remember. Remember, only 0.1 of a centimeter is allowed. So, first step in order to calculate my VI. I have to remember VI is vertical, so I have to work out the difference in height between the two points. So I take the larger number and minus the smaller. Remember, this is in meters. So I took 1, 2, 5, 6 and minus it, uh, or I took 1, 2, 3, 3.5 meters and minus it from 1, 2, 5, 6 which gave me an answer of 22.5 meters, okay? So I worked out my VI, then my HE, and as I indicated from the tip or apex of the trigonometrical station to the dot, and I measure my distance. My one is slightly off here, but it should be on the dot. I remember these, these maps are exaggerated, so that it could explain more clearly to you. So they're not giving you the exact scale. So let's say I measured between the two points and I got five centimeters. That is my map distance. I have to calculate the actual distance for working out my horizontal equivalent. So I took five centimeters times 500 meters. I'm using 500 meters because my VI is in meters so it's better to use the scale of 500 meters remember it's 50,000 centimeters 0 0.5 kilometers and 500 meters so i use 500 meters and i got an answer of 2500 meters so i worked out now my he okay now i need to work out and look at how would I then work out the overall average gradient 
for my answer. So I worked out the VI, which would give me 22.5 meters. I'd get a mark for that. I then worked out my HE, and I must reflect it in my answers. Remember, all steps count. And I got a mark for measuring the five. And then when I calculated, I worked out to 2,500 meters, and I got that. Now, I then, then take these two figures and then put them according to the order of the formula. Vertical distance down here, and then over the horizontal equivalent, which is 2,500. Now, remember, even if this is wrong, we hope that you don't get it wrong. If you substitute correctly, you will get the mark. Now, this is not a normal division. It's a ratio. We're bringing one figure down to one, obviously the smaller figure. So I divide it by itself, 22.5 divided by 22.5 will give me an answer of one. And as we learned in maths, what you do to the top, you have to do to the bottom. So I say 22,500 also divided by 22.5, which will then give me 111.11, okay? I then express it as a ratio. 1 is to 111.11 or 1 in 111.11. Generally, we use this. I have now calculated my gradient and I've got myself five marks. I think the important thing here also is to note that you get marks for each step. So you must show all steps. Now I worked out my a gradient. Let's see what does this mean. 1 is to 1, 1 means, or 111.11 means that for every 111.11 units that you travel horizontally, there's it here. I'm going to do that. 1, uh, 1, I'm going to erase that. I'm still having a problem with my uh, pen. So I'm going to erase that, all right? Let's try again, get my highlighter. I find it easier to work with the highlighter. Okay, so I'm gonna do one, one. This is the best ones I ever had, dot one, one. That's my horizontal. Okay, and my vertical is one. So what am I saying is that for every 111 units horizontally, I only use move up by or elevate by one unit vertically. This then gives me a generally gentle gradient from the points that I have worked out. So it's gentle. Remember, when the second figure is bigger, the gradient is more gentle, okay? Now, let's look at some exam type questions. If I look at the exam type question, the first one, is the gradient steep or gentle? Give a reason for your answer. Obviously, 111 is a gentle slope, and your answer would be simply, that for every one unit vertically, we move 111.11 units horizontally. So the answer is gentle. Uh, another question that came out in the past paper was comment on the velocity. All right. So obviously, when you look at the velocity of the river, because it's gentle, the velocity will be low. When I look at the erosive abilities, the erosive abilities generally based on the uh, average gradient will be less because the gradient is gentle, all right, of the river. Then I ask here, explain the impact on the, uh, this gradient has on the development 
of settlements. Obviously, you can't look at any other factor. You're looking at the gradient. It's gentle. So therefore, it will be easier for the development of settlements because gentle makes it easier, steeper. You will have to do uh, various foundations, etc. And lastly, is the answer, why is the answer not a true reflection of reality? Now, you'll notice whenever you calculate between two points, you will find that the isobars, or rather, what am I saying, isobars, the uh, contours, all right? See, I'm mixing up my pressure systems here. Maybe my blood pressure is going high. The contours are not always the same distance. You may get contours that are close here, and then you get contours that are further apart, contours that are closer, etc. So actually, you're calculating the average gradient. You're taking the whole area from one point to the other and calculating the average gradient of the area. So therefore, if you look at it, it's not just a straight line like that in terms of showing it on a graph. It sometimes is like that. And therefore, what do we do is we calculate the average gradient between the two. Uh, learners, this is just, I, I promised a short lesson so that it's easier to download. So uh, all the best. Uh, remember, subscribe uh, to my YouTube channel so that you can get updates. I will be posting various uh, presentations and content on this. All the best.